Okay, everybody. Hi there. Welcome to a series of videos uh, looking at some of the trickier diagrams, the key ones that uh, make a big difference at A level and IB, and often where there's a little bit of confusion about how to draw these things. So in this one, we're going to take a look at the shape of the long run average cost curve for a business. So the long run average cost is the cost per unit when all factors of production are variable and the business can change the whole scale of production. And this is a familiar shaped average cost curve with falling unit costs over much of the range of output, but average costs starting to go up beyond a certain point. By the way, I'm, in, I'm excluding revenue curves and marginal costs from this video. So when the average cost per unit falls, we say that a firm is benefiting or exploiting internal economies of scale. And that's shown by the downward sloping nature of average cost. There may, be a come up, there may come a point where the unit cost of production essentially stops falling. You've reached the, the lowest feasible average cost, sometimes known as the output of productive efficiency in the long run, also known as the minimum efficient scale. And it could be the case that for a range of output beyond that point, which I've labelled for you here, there could be constant returns to scale. In other words, the unit cost stays the same. But a firm may move beyond that point and start to see um, uh, unit costs going up. And we call that internal diseconomies of scale or decreasing returns to scale. Now the average cost, the long run average cost curve itself is essentially derived from a series of short run average costs, each of which is associated with a given, if you like, size of factory or plant or scale of operation. So here's average cost one, think of this as a car maker or a manufacturer of electric vehicle batteries, for example. They can operate with a unit cost curve shown AC1 in the short run, uh, but they might be able to scale up their production and move on to SRS, SRAC2 in the long run, and that involves lower costs. And indeed, they may well be able to get even bigger uh, output potential, increase the scale of production by adding more labour, land, um, obviously lots of different internal economies of scale they can benefit from. Scaling up production brings the unit cost down. So at output level Q1, there's the average cost there. At output level Q2, there's the average cost there. And indeed, if they go to Q3, they can really get their unit costs or average cost down to a very low level. And this is what we mean by economies of scale. And firms, of course, are trying to reach the minimum efficient scale where they optimise their production and scale of operation to bring down their unit costs. So this would be a good diagram to draw if you get a question on economies of scale, especially when you don't have to talk about revenue and profit. It's purely a cost question. And hopefully that makes sense. Now, one of the confusions that people often make, I mean, I'm marking mocks and things, you spot these things quite often, is they confuse internal economies of scale with external. So an internal economy of scale refers to the growth of the business itself. They're moving down their long run average cost curve. Whereas external economies of scale are available to all the firms in the industry, they arise from the, the, the growth of the sector of, business, of, of an industry in a particular region, for example. And they tend to cause the average cost curve to fall at all levels of output. So if we go back to our original initial average cost curve, let's choose an output level Q1 with a unit cost of AC1. If there are external economies of scale, then the unit cost goes down. So at Q1, instead of AC1, it's now AC2, if you can see that. So external economies of scale have the benefit of lowering costs for all businesses in the industry. Equally, of course, there could be some external diseconomies of scale. And what that causes is an upward shift in LRAC. LRAC, let's get that right. <laughs> so at Q1, now there's higher unit costs. So it could be the industry overdevelops, becomes too congested. Something happens, the, the industry grows too rapidly, leading to average costs going up for firms that are part of the industry. Okay, there we go. In the next video, I'll just take you through the key diagram, the cost diagram for a natural monopoly.